I wanted to take a brief second to tell you about a new podcast that I have. I'm in a band and I've been making music for, I don't know, many years since I was in high school, actually before. And I wanted to do a show where I went out and met other musicians and talked about our process, talked about making music, talked about new releases that we have. So if you're interested in that, then head on over to lorenzosmusic.com or search for Lorenzo's Music Podcast on whatever podcast player you have. That's the Lorenzo's Music Podcast, anywhere where you listen to podcasts. But I started to realize, like, or figure out how the, the shots that I needed to take, right, to make an engaging Instagram reel. And I focus only on Instagram reels. I don't do any other type of video. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to maybe, but right now, that's all I can manage. Yeah. And I would put my, kind of my how-tos, and I would say, here, you know, I make maps, here's how I do it. Those did really well. I mean, I've had a couple go viral again with like 500, 100, 100,000 to 500,000 views. Those have really... Um, spurred a better, a more um, engaged following, right? So when you post a video that's more about how you create your work and it goes viral or whatever, then those people that are following you, they're following you because they want to follow your work. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet an illustrator who illustrates maps, hand-drawn maps, locations from the topical view, like really detailed maps. And they've been doing this for a while. They tell me how they got into it, what their process is, and they've also focused in hard on making videos for Instagram, on making reels. So we also talk about how that sort of strategy has worked for them and also really what they've learned since they started making reels one of their main focuses on Instagram. So here's that conversation starting right now. Sophie Parr and I am an artist and I make maps using pen and ink and I've been doing that for about five years almost now and yeah I'm up in Door County Wisconsin in this little tiny corner of the world and I draw maps of pretty much anywhere okay and the thing that I found fascinating was that you've only been doing it for five years so before this you're saying that you had not been drawing maps I mean no. What were you doing? Oh my gosh. What was I not doing is the okay. better question. So prior to starting my map business in 2019, I was an urban planner and I was the transit uh. planner for the Duluth, Minnesota bus system. And it didn't, it was just not my, not my jam. And so I moved to Madison and just freelanced urban planning work. And that's when I started making maps. And it just started as like a I'm on a family vacation. I needed to have a little outlet while I'm sitting at the beach. I started kind of drawing. I drew a little, you know, map of a neighborhood I lived in in Chicago about 10 years ago, posted it to my Instagram page, which had roughly 300 people following me. Okay. And then I was like, this was kind of fun. I like doing this. I always have loved maps. So I was, this is fun. Let me make another one, posted another one. And then I would start to get comments like, Hey, I would love if you could draw me you know, this place for my cousin or whatever. It was mostly family asking me. Mm -hmm. And then just over time, it just grew and grew. And I started to get commissions. I started to get commissions from people I didn't know. And I was like, "Hmm, maybe this could be something more. So it just grew. And all the, the entire time that I was making maps, I've also been continuing to be a freelance urban planner. And I work for the Department of Natural Resources doing graphic design for the state park system. So I, I dabble in a couple things uh, alongside the map making. Okay. So there was a graphic design element to stuff that you did before this then? Yes, but I okay. have absolutely no professional art background. M- well, that's fine. The, like, I'm just saying you don't just pick up a from... pen one day and you're doing like <laughs> detailed maps. You know, <laughs> and it grew. It really grew. If you ever saw my first map, if you if you want to scroll back on my Instagram page, you can see my first oh, map. Everybody nothing, says that. <laughs> nothing like I do now. <laughs> I, the, I get uh, that, but it's still. Pro- I mean, you had people commenting on it and going, "Do more," and of course, it's going to improve over time. But yeah, yeah. The the but the urban planning and everything that puts uh, that makes a lot more sense in the graphic design background. So it was in 2019 so you were just why did you decide to just draw this map like what was 
I mean, I get doodling, but a map? It was, I I just love maps. I have always loved maps. And I am not, I don't have, you know, I can't illustrate, right? So if you wanted me to like draw a cool person or like a scene or whatever, I can't do that. I I was, I was decent at drawing like buildings. So again, straight lines, details, but I was like, well, why don't I just try to like draw this like map? And I was kind of making, trying to make it look like Google with like different colors and how, you know, on Google, if you get to like an urban area, it's a little darker brown and then residential areas are lighter, parks are green. I was trying to kind of do that. And obviously that's not anything I do now because everything I do is um, black and white now. Right. But yeah. Yeah. It just kind of started there as a really simple doodling on the beach. Okay. And you just happen to have like multicolored pencils or pens with you? At that time I had like a water, a travel watercolor set. So I was oh, watercoloring. Nice. Yeah. But again, oh. I'm not a painter. Like color to me is like very foreign. I did not know what I was doing. I just kind of went for it. And yeah. then as I started to do more, I was like, oh, I like this kind of more detailed pen and ink. I think I'm going to stick with that. And that's what I obviously have stuck with since. Yeah. Color to me is always an afterthought. It's never a thing that I start out going like, oh, I'm going to make, I never, I never plan out the color. I should, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. But then uh, I just end up doing everything like you in black and white. So um, now the one thing that I found fascinating as well, especially from the videos that you've been posting I kind of get the sense that you freehand a lot of it. Is that, am I wrong in thinking that or are you freehanding it? I, I don't know. It's what is your yeah, process? I freehand all of it. Okay. So yeah. So the process starts with, I basically go on, you know, any aerial map online, get a, do it, do is get a screenshot. And I, I use the same ratio in all my maps. So if you look at my maps, they're all the same aesthetic, I would say, because they're all half of a mile in every inch. So if you are looking at a two inch by two inch little square, you're going to be showing a one inch or a one mile by one mile, like piece of land. Now, are you doing that because of normal map measurements or you just chose that size? I chose that size as I was starting to sell. It was kind of a strategy, right? So people were, as people were commissioning me, I wanted to be able to capture enough of like an area that they wanted, but I also was very particular about how much detail could be captured. Mm -hmm. So if I was closer up, then there's a lot more detail, but at the same time, I would have to be a lot more perfect. Right. And I'm a little doing freehand it, you know, I make mistakes. There's plenty of mistakes in my maps and then further away, you're losing like so much detail. So I sort of like over time figured out that this half mile per inch ratio worked really well for what I wanted to do. So I kind of have stuck with that since, but I really start with just a screenshot on Google and I, you know, I measure it out. So I measure out like basically one square mile because what I'm referencing are my mini maps, which are my most popular type of map, which are two inch by two inch showing that one square mile. Those are what I hands down get commissioned to do the most and what I probably sell the most. So I've always kind of focused on those. I can do bigger maps and I have done, I have a very, very large Madison map. Uh, I saw that one, but yeah. Yeah, that took a very long time. The mini maps I can kind of work through and they're a little more fun because I can get them done in a day. Um, so I take the screenshot, I drop a grid on it in Photoshop, like a one inch by one inch grid. And then right. I have the same grid on my paper and I just sketch out where the any roads are or boundary waters. So any boundary, like mm. rivers, lakes, things like that. I get a general you know, feel for where they are using that grid. And then I can sketch them in and then I just go in and I just ink it completely. So I don't sketch in, I don't pencil in all the details. I only pencil in the roads and boundary waters. Then I go in and I add all the ink and I can usually just use my phone at that point. Okay. So I can kind of do it wherever, which is kind of nice. There was one thing that I noticed in a drawing that you did. And now you saying the grids, it makes a lot more sense. There's one where it seemed like you were just kind of going up and down in an area, like filling it in sort of thing. Uh, And it was like the land. So I guess I was going to ask a question, like, are you drawing roads or I was curious what that is. So explain that to me. And you you shook your head. So you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about when I do farm fields. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. So when I do farm fields, it's very thin lines and how I capture them. This I actually learned this doing the Madison map because on the Madison map in the top left is, you know, it's up. Wanakee is at the top of the 
towards the top of like Lake Mendota. And then over, over there is kind of more farm. Mm -hmm. So I kind of got into a groove of like, how do I capture the idea of fields, mm -hmm. which are literally just blank areas of land. Right. But when you look at them on a Google map, they all kind of different colors. You know, you can kind of tell they're like different areas okay. of land. So how do I capture that? So I do it by basically drawing super thin lines and then that's one field. And then any field that's below it or next to it, I do diagonal or in the other way, or just to kind of show that it's all these different types of farm fields. Um, but that's what you're, I think I'm pretty sure that's what you're referencing. Is okay. How I no, I, I'm pretty sure I am too. Yeah. The, uh, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, I would just scribble it in, but you did something fancy. <laughs> so. I was like, how do I capture this? The hardest thing to draw hands down is a golf course. Golf oh. courses took me forever to figure out. How Why? To what do, do you do for them? So now what I do, and again, I learned this in the Madison map. Uh, so you have your courses and usually you have that run through the courses that kind of like border each, you know, hole or whatever. So I draw the, the lines of trees very close to each other. So that there's white spaces between the trees that represent the actual like green or the, I'm not a golfer. I'm not going to no, say I, think, right I get what you're saying. I'm not either. Yeah. So, I mean, I've played it, but <laughs> I've heard some yeah. of the terms. <laughs> yeah. So I'll draw kind of the trees to outline the, you know, each of the, the, oh my gosh, what's the word? Like runway. What's the word? The, um, you know what I'm talking about? You Just mean like where long... you hit the ball or where you want the ball to land? <laughs> Just like the whole thing. Oh, the, the whole, whole thing. thing. From like where you tee off to the green, everything. Um, now I'm forgetting that... it. And I think I do know <laughs> the word, <laughs> but now I'm yeah, on so the I spot. Kind of just outline those you know, the shapes of those okay. with trees and that's, the links. that's helped the what they're called links. Yeah. I think now I'm, now yeah. I feel weird that I said that out loud and everybody's yeah. going, no, they're not. not 100% sure. <laughs> but, uh, but that's how I do those. And I, I joke, the only thing I feel like I would not know how to draw mostly because I haven't had to yet is like a desert. I, I don't know how I would capture a desert. <laughs> That's the only thing I cannot. I'm like, don't ever try to ask me to draw anything in Arizona. I don't know how I would do it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it just reminds me of that old joke. Like, uh, you show somebody a blank piece of paper and they go, what's that? And you go, what? I drew a polar bear in a snowstorm or something like that. You know, like it's, yeah. that would, cause all I'm thinking is for a desert. I'm like, well, you draw nothing. <laughs> yeah it's like white which is water right so yeah. i'm like it's not water water's already white what's a desert so that one will be a challenge if i ever come across it so earlier you said that you started drawing this because even though you have a background in graphic design you're like i'm not an illustrator if you wanted me to draw something i wouldn't be able to do it but the funny thing is is you have the opposite like me as a cartoonist I'm going, I wish I could detail backgrounds like this. I'm always trying to get better at drawing backgrounds. Of course, I don't want to do them too detailed because it'll be too much of a weird juxtaposition with the silly drawing that I'm doing. But I always am fascinated with drawing backgrounds and details like that and just finding things that stand out in the background. So that's what comes naturally to you. I'm amazed that you haven't done a where's waldo type situation oh, with those I sort of things to. with details just like hide things in it and go find these so you have thought of that i and i have done it a couple times so my washington dc map this was years ago it was a commission it was a larger map i hid words in that one related to like politics oh, nice and uh the madison map the large the original what's cool is the original madison map has the name of my favorite painting, which is Nighthawk by Edward Hopper. So oh. I hid that word in it and it's only in the original. So when I went and digitized it to print, I actually removed the word. So only the original map has the, has that written in it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah so I would, I would love to do more stuff like that. Uh, that would be, that would be really fun. No, that's yeah. fun. I'd I don't know why that made me start thinking about what you were talking about. All of a sudden, I'm just like, I'm picturing it in my head. That's fun. I, I do enjoy those type of things. I love it when things are discovered, like even, yeah, just weird, weird little like uh, hunts that you didn't even know were there or you discover yeah. it suddenly and you're like, oh, that's in there. And then you start wondering, is there more or is it just the one? I do enjoy yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it's fun. And when you started posting this stuff online and you got the encouragement, uh, when did you, cause you slowly went like, oh, this could be a business. 
Mm-hmm. When did that transition happen? And what really was your first step in that direction? What what path did you start going down when you thought this could be something more? So it kind of happened a little, uh, just just in a, not a super straightforward way. So I was in Madison when I started drawing maps and COVID hit and I moved to Door County and I was just trying to kind of figure out what I was doing. Door, Door County is where a lot of my family lives. So I just relocated there for that time and I was drawing and then I was still posting and I was starting to get a little bit of a following. And then in, it had to have been, it had to have been June of 2021. I had a real go crazy viral, 22 million views. I mean, it was I saw just that like, you, had, you had posted about it too. Yeah. Yeah. It just was very surreal when you have something like that happen. And I didn't have like a huge influx of, of um, followers or anything. It was like 10,000 in the course of like a week. But, um, it just kind of was like, oh, okay, maybe like this could be something, but it's interesting. I mean, when you go viral and it's, it's a, it's a reel that doesn't showcase your work and what you do, you don't actually end up with followers that are that interested in your work. They just liked that reel and thought that you'd post more like that. When in reality, it was just kind of a funny reel, right? It had nothing to do really with my work at all. Yeah. So it's that whole concept is very interesting. I learned a lot through that process. But gaining the following, and then I started to grow a little bit of a following in Door County because I was starting to do a couple markets where I would just kind of like post up with a table and have a couple of my prints. I did a lot of little Door County prints. And yeah, how many did you have once you started going to markets? I probably had, oh gosh, I mean, I had a decent amount because commission I made, I turned into a print. So I had a decent amount of maps. Door County wise, I had... um, I had like all the major ones, Fish Creek, Ephraim, Sister Bay. I, I had the, the major ones. And then I would start to get a couple commissions for people to want to do other Door County maps, which then had allowed me to have more prints. So at markets, I kind of was able to gain a little traction. I think I did my first market in June, June of 2020. No. Um, I was going to say. <laughs> I think it was the fall of 2020. It was in someone's driveway. Oh, okay. It was All right. Going to be outside, right? So like it was in someone's driveway. And I think that was like my first actual market. And yeah, I had a couple sales there, not anything special, but I would do a couple other pop-ups here and there. And then in um, April of 2021, I found a space in Ellison Bay. So way up at the top okay. that the woman had recently purchased the building, wanted to find a retail tenant. And I was like, well, why don't I just try to open a gallery? Like, why not? I I didn't even really think much about it. Why not? (laughs) Yeah. I just was like, I was, I was working remote for the DNR. I was doing my freelance urban planning. I was roasting coffee at a coffee shop in Ellison Bay. And I was like, why, why not? Well, so and and most people at that point get a studio or something. You're like, why don't I open a gallery? That's a, that's a much more bold move. Well, uh, I knew I needed to make money, right, to pay for the space. And okay. my maps weren't quite there yet. So I was like, why don't I take over the space, put artwork up on the wall, find other artists, and have a gallery, right? The dream. What was <laughs> the business model for that then? I get I get that, and I could see opening that too. It's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, let's open a coffee shop, and we'll make tons of money, and everybody will come and drink coffee. You still got to get people to show up and, you know, yes. the supplies and all that. So what was the business model for this? I'm very curious. It's, I get that it was a really quick, like, let's do it decision, but how did you yeah. make it work? <laughs> so I just found artists on like Instagram. I just reached out to people and it was all consignment. So I didn't have to output a cost at the beginning. So they would get paid if their work sells. And I focused mostly on up and coming artists or artists that had, that I sort of knew or knew of that wanted to grow a following and were really willing to get their artwork out there, right? Without too much of a commitment. And you had reached Um, out to them through Instagram or you already knew them? um, Some of them I knew, some of them I reached out cold through Instagram, made some really good relationships through that. Some of them I knew through other people. Um, It just kind of all kind of came together and the, the business evolved each year. So like the first year I operated, 
versus the second year I operated versus this last year that I operated, the gallery has just changed because I've gotten smarter about what I have and what I want to sell and made better relationships with different artists. So it was, I mean, I have no background in art selling other than me just like popping up at markets with my own stuff. So it was a, a very big learning experience. Okay. All right. And then you just, uh, I mean, did you get a loan for such a thing? And I, I'm sorry to talk about money. I, I'm just, that's okay. I'm happy to talk curiosity. about it. I mean, every artist that. goes, well, how would I do that? You know, so it's, yep. uh, was it a loan or you were just able to, you were in a place where you were able to do such a thing or how did that come about? I, uh, influx $10,000 into the business of my own money. Okay. And that was all I needed to start. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. All right. so, it so there is a bit of difficulty. I, you know, I can't just, I would need to do something like that if I were to, <laughs> to do it is what you're saying. I mean, I was lucky enough that the space was very affordable. It was ready to go like yeah. white walls, everything. Um, so I, yeah. So the 10,000 I put in, um, you know, I'm still there. Like I haven't necessarily made a lot of money, but I haven't lost money. I've the business is kind of, because I have other work I'm doing. The business is kind of you know, when I make money, I can invest back into it. So obviously I've invested in things like a great computer and laptop and I'm at, you know, like all these kinds of things I've been able to invest back into the business. So it's not making a ton of money. It's not right. making me rich and famous, but it's, it's sustaining itself, which is nice. And that's really what it's all about. I mean, rich and famous, that would be nice, but you know what? Uh, sustainability is also, I yeah. mean, personally, I've always thought that was the goal. If I can get by and do what I want to do, Cool. Yes. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Which is why it's nice to keep having my other jobs. I, it's, you know, my map business. Well, and it's funny when my gallery started, I was very timid about ma- putting my maps out there. I was, oh, so. I was not very, um, you know, my, my maps were in the back. I was like, I don't want to show people my work. I was very nervous about selling myself. I would okay. much rather sell other people's work because I just was, All that's right. just kind of my personality, which has changed changed tremendously but at the time i just was like i don't want anyone to know i'm just going to keep it quiet if people like my work great and if not i'm not going to push it Mm -hmm. and then over time i started to realize that my work was growing and i my my gallery sort of evolved half of it in the last year um i took over half of it for just my work just my kind of studio which is where i do a lot of my filming for my instagram reels and everything and yeah it just it's evolved and grown and um, I'm actually closing the gallery part of it, um, and it's now only going to be my studio. Oh, really? So, mm-hmm. Do yeah. Tell. So this is my fourth season. This will be my fourth season in the space, and so this year will be just my studio. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I saw that you say you open to the public on Fridays and Saturdays on your website. That was in the summer. Right now, okay. I'm pretty much closed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just off season. So when did you decide to? make the transition from gallery to just it being your own space? I made the transition. I always knew that I did not want to have a gallery forever. I always knew that I, if I had anything, I wanted to just be like my stuff. And the gallery was really that opportunity to make the income needed to like sustain the space. Okay. And now that my map business is doing well enough to sustain the space, I don't have to necessarily carry on with the gallery. And it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of responsibility to have people's artwork and sell it. And yeah. um, so I just decided that it wasn't, you know, in my future and was ready to kind of close the door on that part of it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and I, I would like to do some traveling this summer and, you know, Door County in the summer, you have to be here. So right. I just knew that I was going to want to get out and having the gallery. I love it. You want the opposite. Align. It's like people who live in the Wisconsin Dells. It's like, oh, another summer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. The uh, what is the space like that you have? I'm curious. Is it a mixed use space or is it just a straight up retail space? Like, what is it? What is it like where you are? Where you are? And also, just because I mean, I agree. Like the people that visit Door County, it's beautiful there. So in my mind, I have an image of just like some quaint little thing, you know, <laughs> a lighthouse somewhere nearby. It's a quaint little building. It's like quintessential Door County. It's the old post office and it is downtown. Come on now, really? It's downtown Ellison Bay. You can walk right to that main corner, main intersection. Nice. And it has a it has an Airbnb attached to it. Oh. A three bed, two queen beds, some twin beds upstairs. Yeah, really nice little Airbnb attached to it. And then my side of it is 
basically like an open gallery. There's a small office. There's the space where um, I use to do my filming, like where my Maps by Sophie sign is um, in a lot of my videos. And then there's more of an open, straightforward gallery space, which is where most of the larger artwork that I had was hung. So it's white walls. It's, 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 it's cute. It's an amazing space. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying the place where you film your videos is in a different room than where the gallery is at. Yeah, there's like a little ramp. It's all kind of one space. It's just like broken up into these like weird little areas. But it's basically down this little cute ramp with this little (laughs) railing. And uh, that's my little Mass by Sophie space, I call it. Okay. And I do actually want to talk about your videos. So I would say um, I started seeing more about your maps when you started doing your videos. I'm assuming it's around the same time that your reel went viral. And so I ended up seeing it too. And then I started seeing more and more of your videos. You did more, I want to say in, uh, in 2023, you did more of a vlogging type of reel that you did. And you did quite a few of those. Tell me about the process of your video. As a person that makes video and is always trying yeah. to promote stuff through video, I'm curious what your technique was, what your learning I want to say curve. That's not right. Learning what you learned along the way, that sort of thing. Like, tell me about when you first started making the videos. Yeah. So I, let's see, I started to really dive into Instagram. I would say in the last year when my space kind of came together so that I had this like more attractive looking space to film in. And I just started to kind of learn about what worked and what didn't. That's kind of what I realized you have to do, especially with Instagram is start making videos and see what hits and see what doesn't. Okay. And let's see, I kind of went two different directions. I went in a direction of being a lot more vulnerable and open with kind of my, a little bit of my life and the struggles that I have myself just being self-employed and an artist and in this kind of world of art that I don't necessarily feel like I necessarily fit into all the time because I don't have like a professional background and, you know, just kind of the hardships of how life outside of what you see on Instagram, I kind of tried to like make myself more human on it, I guess, and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm like a real person. And then like, sometimes I struggle and sometimes I get commissions and I can't do them because I just Mm -hmm. am mentally blocked and that's the real life. And it's not always like wonderful and perfect, even though the space looks great. Um, so I kind of went that route with some of my videos, which was very interesting. I realized that a lot of people felt similarly to me. Mm -hmm. Um, I get a lot of messages after I would post, you know, more of a, I would say a vulnerable post and yeah, people would be like, you know, I feel the same way. Thank you so much for sharing. And that's always nice to hear that. Like, Hey, there's like a real person on the other side of this. Right. And then the other route I went down was more of the, how I do what I do and um, how I make my maps. And I started to figure out, and it took me a little while, but I started to figure out and I have no video background, the types of shots. That was going to actually be my next question. (laughs) Yeah, I have no video background. But I started to realize like, or figure out how the the shots that I needed to take, right, to make an engaging Instagram reel. And I focus only on Instagram reels. I don't do any other type of video. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to maybe, but right now, that's all I can manage. Yeah. And I would put kind of my how-tos and I would say, here, you know, I make maps, here's how I do it. Those did really well. I mean, I've had a couple go viral again with like 500 to 100, 100,000 to 500,000 views. Those have really um, spurred a better, a more um, engaged following, right? So when you post a video that's more about how you create your work and it goes viral or whatever, then those people that are following you, they're following you because they want to follow your work, not just because you posted a funny reel and, you know. So I've noticed that through that, posting more of those how to's, which are, I I would say like now my Instagram bread and butter, um, there's more, there's not only more followers, but the more important thing is there's more, um, email subscribers. So I'll get email, you know, email notifications, like, Hey, new email sign up. Mm -hmm. That's important because those are the people who are then going to turn into buyers potentially. See, I've had a sort of similar experience, but not similar outcome with video. So I've had a video that's done very, very well, gotten viewed many times, gotten Mm -hmm. many, many likes, but then only received two follows. Or Mm -hmm. even when I get followers, not email signups, even though I have different ways, different methods, different things I'm trying for email setups. So I will say kudos to you for the fact that you were getting all these 
uh, followers from that too. I mean, that's really cool. That's that's remarkable. And uh, so I'm jealous of that, I guess. But <laughs> I will say consistency is the best. Right. I mean, I and I would just, I, it's funny, like when I first started posting my how to's and I would gain some traction, I'm like, well, why don't I just post the same exact video again, just a yes. different map? Yes. Right. So it's literally the same exact video, different map. And I started to get fun. Like I would wear different outfits in my like intro video or whatever. And like, I would, I would start to have fun with it, but literally it's the same exact video. So it is so easy to make because it's like, here, I do this shot. I do this shot. I do this shot, mm -hmm. set up the camera here, draw the map done post. And I just, you get into that groove and you're like, this is, this is how easy it should be. Yeah. And that was yeah. what I was leading up to. I was going to ask the, when you learned from it, this is the hard thing where it's, when making a video, it is easy to go, I have an idea and do a thing and then it does well, but it's the preparing to go, what do I make next? What is, how do I consistently mm -hmm. do it? How do I keep this momentum? And that's, that's the hard part. And one of the things being, what do I do next? I just did a video about that. I mean, if, if uh, I were to reference, say you said you, you don't have a video background, I'm sure you watched a tutorial or something to kind of go, how do I edit this? What kind of, or, you know, or maybe there's somebody yeah. you follow or something. But the point being is if you watch that, I bet you they have a video right after it that shows the same technique in a different way. They, yep. I, I watch a lot of marketing videos. Here's how to use email to grow your business fast. And the next one was, I can't believe that this worked to grow my business fast. And yeah. you watch it. What is it? It's about email marketing. It's the yeah. same video about the same thing yeah. 20 times until they move on to the next subject. And it right. really does fill up the room. So that's very true. So yeah. um, you did the how-to videos. So I guess when you were saying uh, you had the format, you said, I shoot this, this, and this. So how are you mapping these out? That's the one thing is it's, okay to wing it maybe one time but once you start uh doing more of a process doing more of the videos making these videos what is your process for saying okay now i'm going to do some how-to videos what's your setup so i mentally prepare for it <laughs> because i have to i do have to i do have to kind of lay it all out but basically i'll do a how-to on how i make a mini map which are my two inch by two inch which i was talking about earlier and i'll just get ready so i'll have my computer on and i will i, I have my shot where i sh shoot into the location on google earth where i'm you know type it in yeah. i've got the shot where i pan to the aerial view then i've got the shot that goes to my paper and then i've got then i that's when i hook my camera into my um i have like a you know a, a canvas lamp that company canvas that does mm. the art lamps. I have one of those. So I'll um, hook my camera to there. I'll do the sketch in a time-lapse every time I do the sketch in a time-lapse. So that's when I do all the roads and the boundaries. So once I'm done with that, my camera comes down and I literally just like, I'll, I'll be like drawing and I'll just kind of do this every once in a while. I'll take little, little screenshots or little videos um, of drawing different pieces. And the thing about posting Instagram for me I have a very short attention span. I don't batch things, right? People like to batch their Instagram reels. They make like 10 of them and then they post. I I post in the moment. <laughs> like okay. if, if you see an Instagram post of mine and it was posted five minutes ago, I made it five minutes ago. Okay. So it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't, so as soon as I start getting all these shots, I'm, I'm getting them into Instagram and I'm creating the reel as I go. Okay. Um, and so by the time I'm signing the mini map and that last shot, I post the Instagram reel and it's done. So it can all happen in the span of about four hours, Okay, which includes completing the whole drawing. Nice. I've always tried yeah. to get an above shot and I never have anything tall enough. I'm even now <laughs> looking around, like I think about it all the time. And if I do have something tall enough, it's nothing that will go above me. It's something that will just go up high. Yeah. My canvas lamp, <laughs> I love it. It's sitting right here. Uh, it's got it when they were not even, they were very early on in their business canvas, which is out of, I think like Arkansas or Alabama or something. Okay. But now they've blown up. Everyone has their, I feel like everyone has their lamps. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not everyone. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so now you've started also selling your prints online. Now are these just prints or are they originals? Tell me more about the store that you set up for yourself online. 
Um, I sell mostly prints. I do have some originals on that need to come off. Um, but I mostly sell prints and I'll sell some framed and that's just mostly my mini maps. Mini maps are really what I sell. Um, and what I commission, that's what I stick to larger maps. Don't move as fast. The mini ones move pretty, pretty quickly. So I just set up my own online store, uh, four years ago and started selling on there and I'll get, I'll get a, I'll get an online sale every, maybe like once a month. It's not anything huge. Okay. And you set that up through a Wix website, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which does not integrate with Instagram, which is difficult. Really? So, yeah. It doesn't integrate. So if you are looking to integrate a store through Instagram, I would go with like Shopify or something like that. Okay. Yeah. I had, uh, it wasn't an easy process, but I was able to integrate my store that I have through a Facebook store, which then can integrate into Instagram mm, <laughs> and setting up yeah. a Facebook store to, that's connected to your store. Nightmare of a process. I Not, can only like it was one of those things where I kept trying, then it kept saying fail and go through and say, do it this way. And yeah. I did it that way yeah. and it would go, it failed. And then all of a sudden, like, the hundredth time I tried it, all of a sudden it said success. And it's like, I didn't do anything differently. <laughs> Why is this working now? It's uh, all just, I, I can never figure it out half the time. <laughs> and um, I guess, where do you get your prints? Are you getting your prints done locally? Are you having them done and sent to you? Like, how are those being made? I use a local printer in Sister Bay. So okay. it's super, super local. And because my prints are black and white, they're very easy to print. If I was True. doing color work, I would go with a more professional art quality like printer. Um, I, used to, I used to actually use Picture Salon in Madison. Oh. Um, but when I moved up here, it was just a lot easier to go with the local printer here. So yeah, okay. I use like a nice linen paper. My prints have, I've always been super happy with my prints. Yeah. All right. And then with your Instagram account and the reels that you started making, aside from just making things and putting them out there, are there other ways that you go about promoting yourself, whether through marketing or is it just through just organic? How, how are you promoting yourself? I was really big into the art shows for a little while. So whole tent set up, everything. They're just a lot of work. And I yeah. did um, the Madison Art Fair on the Square in 2022. I was on there like emerging artist block and I've done the sister Bay fine art fest every year since I moved up here, which has been a good one. So I was doing a couple art fairs and things like that. And I'll do a couple pop-up markets here and there when people are like, Hey, we're going to have this little event here. Would you like to have a table? I'll be like, sure. So I did a couple Christmas things. The other big one for me is I do the door County Chris Kindle market. This is my, I just finished my third year doing that. Okay. And that's huge. So that's a three weekend Friday, Saturday, Sunday market in Sister Bay. I have a whole house that I basically move into for three weeks. Oh, wow. And there's thousands of people that come through there. So I not only sell a lot of my work there, I also get a lot of inquiries on commissions, signups for my newsletter, things like that. So that's a huge, huge marketing thing for me, especially because Door County has people that come from all over the place. So you know, I'm not only selling to Door County people, I'm selling to people from Milwaukee and Madison and, all, you know, not even just Wisconsin. So that's been a huge thing for me. But really, it's Instagram, my email list, which I send an email out only when I'm open for commissions, which is maybe once a year. Yeah. Uh, okay. And hopefully a little more because I started only taking mini map commissions. So hopefully I'll open up. I'll, the last time I opened up, I got 29. So I'm trying to just keep it chill and get those done and then maybe open it up again. But uh, yeah, so my email list, Instagram, those markets. And that's really, that's kind of it for me. Because um, again, it's not necessarily my full-time gig. If I mm -hmm. was full-time, I think I'd be doing a lot more art shows. I think I would be pushing myself a lot more in different ways. But right now, is I can, I can manage what I can manage. So. Okay. And on average, how long, let's say with one of your smaller pieces, how long does it take you to do one of your maps? Start to finish with all the admin time in terms of contracting, invoicing, emails, all that like planning and preparation, which a lot of people don't always think about mm -hmm. going into it. Um, from start to finish, I say three to four hours for a, a little two by two mini map. Mm. Not bad. <laughs> I would and say that's pretty quick. If, you, if you're like on the ocean and half of it's water, then you can cut that time in half. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
And then uh, do you have any projects or things coming up or events that you'd like to mention to people before we go today? I don't think so. I am, fingers crossed, going to start working on my big Chicago map, which I have a couple Instagram reel posts about, but has not made any movement in the last couple of months. But I would love to keep moving on that. That's probably the biggest project. Otherwise, the biggest thing I'm doing is next year I'll be at the Chris Kindle Market again. Okay. And then if people wanted to check out your work, where should they go do that? Uh, they can do that at my website, mapsbysophie.com. My website store will be closed this summer only because I'm doing some traveling. But uh, they can also just look at my Instagram page. I, I post when I draw and it's just Maps by Sophie. So Great. I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much.